audio jungle. When it comes to people around here, nobody's quite got a story like El Wobble, has he? That's a story. Let's face it, he was a legend, wasn't he? He's a mythical beast. Definitely an an enigma. So, do people around here talk about him much, or how come he isn't more widely known? Oh, you know, like, there's a lot of sort of shrouded conversation going on but yes no there is a story to the man we will get there we've got a fair background but i think it's interesting we need to we need to let other people know how he lived well indeed yeah so when did he first make an appearance around here off the train in the 20s i would think yeah well yeah i think that's fairly accepted that he did come off the train in the 20s drunk the hearsay was that he was chucked off the train in the middle of the night at Cook's Plains with nothing but a bottle of tequila, a homemade tequila, uh, a bag full of leather-working tools. That's right. That's all he needed. Yep. And one other thing, his infamously filthy poncho. That's right. The old poncho, yeah. Oh, and another. His, His boots... Fancy boots, oh yeah, we're not forgetting those. Well, that's, no one will forget those. I think that's the, that's probably his mark. And next morning, the locals found him dead drunk on the side of the track, and I think they tried to steal his boots. Is that right? Look, I, I heard there was interest in his boots. I, I think people were generally fearful enough of the man not to try and steal them. But there was a lot of interest in his boots. He abused them in some pretty strong language, I believe. El Punta Madre, I think, was one of the words he used. Or several. Which is... It, it, it's not for... Oh, it, public consumption. Public. No, no, but the, no. The language is yeah. Spanish. Spanish for... It's got a lot to do with Madre being a mother and Punta... There's, you can, oh, we get the yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So he came to, feeling a bit crook, of course. Uh, homemade tequila would do that to you, but he took another swig of it. And he looked around... And he couldn't believe it. He was back in Mexico. Shocked that he was seeing his homeland. Sort of Mexico. It was hot. Yeah, the equivalent thereof. Flat, dusty, white plains. Distant piles of limestone that looked like... Old Mayan temples. (sighs) Well, yeah, the foundations thereof. And, of course, the prickly pear growing in abundance. The killer is, though, the presence of those sleepy lizards. Heaps of lizards. Now, there's a few theories about lizards and visions. Of course, every, you know, all the, not that I'm familiar with, you know, hallucinations or anything like that, but all the books I've read, you know, there's, you, you rarely get a decent hallucination without some lizards. The appearance of a lizard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, lizards are a common theme. He arrived back in another time, in another place, parallel universe. And I heard that he really spent the rest of his days trying to prove that he was in an alternate Mexican universe. Potentially to others more than himself. I think he was a true believer that he had actually fallen through that wormhole into El Paradiso. And that he needed to put his... Aztec Mexican stamp on this environment to prove to others that they were living in a paradise. That's a noble endeavour, really, isn't it? It is really, really yeah. colonial South Australia. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I think people around here didn't really quite realise how privileged they were, and he was the man who was about to make them sure of it. Well, yeah. One of the first things he did was he took the local prickly pear that grew around the town, still does. Mm-hmm and made some high-octane tequila from it. That's right. right. Yeah, that we know. Now, no one had seen tequila back then, and it was a really big hit. Because, let's face it, there weren't many things you could have back then that would give you hallucinogenic visions. 
I believe he told the authorities that it was a kind of Mexican folk medicine, a sort of um, uh, a Central American aspro. A cure-all. You're having a lie-down and a good shot yeah. of tequila. Send mad women straight. He set himself up and to sell his brew, he built a cantina just north of the town and it's still there. And it just looks like a little Mexican building. It's quite beautiful. And it's on the old 90-mile desert road, just, uh, just north of Cook's Plains came a little bit sort of you know, extinct after a while. It's, it's, it's on the old road, but the railway ran past it. And did that sort of slow it down a bit, do you think? Or is it... The slow... The trade. I, I understood the trade went pretty well for quite a while because it was a very, very unusual product. Yeah. But because he couldn't get the regular tequila worm, he used a witch grub instead. Indeed. And uh, the witch grub was like a meal in a bottle. And it came with a special kick. <clears throat> the old Womple kick. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, the, the, the worm, the witchetty grub, behaved a little bit differently in this part of the world, and it would swell up to the size of a hot dog. Yeah. And, of course, the only way that uh, you could get it out of the bottle is you, you couldn't actually suck it out of the bottle, traditionally, the way the uh, Mexicans would do it. So El Womple, with his um, beautifully tuned manners, would simply sidle up next to you and smash you over the head with his bottle Ooh. using his best manners and and extract it in that manner and you would then consume the grub startled but you would go Stunned. well that's fine senor but uh, an enormous foot long grub a foot and a half long oh and you would eat it and that would be the end of you literally <laughs> It wasn't the hit in the head with the bottle. It was the it was the tequila worm, the the witchy grub. He made a lot of money out of all this stuff, didn't he? He did, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he he was on the road. He was on the main drag and heading heading out of town. So he used the money he made from the sly grog operation to start another business, a sort of uh, clothing and footwear business, I believe. Indeed. So there's some really interesting theories here about the Williams connection course the reg williams connection yeah 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 look there's there's too many parallels here for me to discredit any of this i think this is all right on the money yeah this is one section of the story that i think we can pretty well lock in yep so and that that's the the, the boot <laughs> There's more to the story of El Wampel at Cook's Plains, a lot more. So keep a lookout for long story short signs, keep listening to social media, and you can add to the El Wampel story too. <laughs>